So, welcome, and um, I'll give just a little spiel about what we will be doing in the session. Um, as usual, it's an all-rounder kind of program, um, but with an emphasis on strengthening the legs and also working with your feet. Everything in yoga postures starts from the ground up, so we like that emphasis on the feet. Um, and uh, we'll start today's session lying over the bolster, even though that has nothing to do with legs or feet. Um, it creates a nice opening for the upper part of the chest, and that helps with breathing right from the outset. So I'm going to take a position on my mat, lying down. And I'll sit in the middle of my bolster with my legs bent and my feet on either side and then just gradually lower down. Until the bolster supports the middle of my upper part of my back, kind of the shoulder blade area. But for everyone, this is a different um, spot for comfort. So if I move back a little bit, then the bolster is right at the bottom of my shoulder blades. If I move up onto the bolster a little bit higher, my shoulders are elevated off of the bolster. So I like to have a little bit more support in my shoulders down and the bolster opening up the midsection of my back. And then your arms just by your side. <coughs> and immediately I can feel a depth of the breath that I didn't experience before. just because of the support of the um, bolster on my back. Also, um, the breath all the way up to the top lo lobes of my lungs, where my collarbones are. And all of that is enhanced if you can relax your diaphragm ribs. And what happens when I relax in that area is it feels like my ribs rest a little bit more downward and towards my abdomen. So let's stay for a, a minute quietly and just observing the breath. And even though we've been here a relatively short time, let's hope it's accomplished some good for our lungs and for our breathing, but um, come down slowly and instead of rolling to the side, I'm just going to push the bolster away from my back and bring my buttocks all the way to the ground. And that's when you and um, I'm noticing this for myself. Um, you feel the effect of the bolster in a greater opening through the front of the chest. So let's come up to sitting now. And in your seated position, just stretch your legs out as in Dandasana. And then bring your hands back behind the line of your buttocks and lean back slightly into your hands so that your back, your spine is straight. Separate your feet a little bit. And then in that idea of looking after our feet and kind of waking them up, maybe circle 
your toes, your foot bones, your ankles. And then in the opposite direction, circling. Or you could have the both feet going the same direction, just making it up to get some movement there. It's better if you can do this without moving your knees. So really, it's a more isolated movement to your feet. And then curl your toes and then open them up. I call the this happy surprise toes. Curling your toes and then opening them up. Curl, open, like that. What are some other movements that we can do with our feet? We can roll them towards each other, the soles of your feet towards each other, and then away. If you walk a lot, especially if you walk on hard surfaces, this is really um, an indulgent thing to do for your feet. Um, one more movement. So flexing your feet in both directions. Toes down, toes back. Notice if you've slumped a little bit and then lift your chest and open your chest again. All right, and now we're going to come up to standing and see if you can do that in a way where you're using your feet and your legs to stand up. Um, more often than not, we lift ourselves with our hands and our arms. So see if you can emphasize coming up, like a little lunge position, and coming all the way up to standing. A little bit um, later, we're going to be using a chair, so it would be a really good thing for you to have a chair nearby. But first, um, let's work with a yoga block, with the foam block. So if you take your block and have it this way and flat, place it between your feet and then bring your feet in right up against the block. So I want to have my big toe pressing in against the block. My heels are a little bit separated. And it's just a wake-up call for using the base of the big toe. Sometimes when we're standing or when we're doing standing poses, we're rolling onto the outside of the foot. So as much as possible, stay on the inside of your foot more, the big toe base. Feel your heel bone. And then soften behind your knees so you're not overlocking there. And then from your strong base, inhale, bring your arms up. Bend your knees as you come into kind of a version of Uttanasana, standing forward bend, where your ribs are close to your thighs. And bring your hands onto your back where your sacrum is. Inhale, come up again. Bring your arms all the way up. And exhale, take a dive forward, and bringing your chest close to your thighs as you bend your legs. Inhale, go up. Exhale, forward bending. Inhale, reaching for the ceiling. And exhale. Where the breath is strong when you exhale, moving the air out of the abdomen. And notice if you've remembered to keep your weight on the big toe base. So strong feet, firm ankles. And last one, inhale, come up. And then your arms just down by your side. Nicely done. And let's do another exercise that's for your feet. I'm going to bring my chair in in case I need it for balance. I've got the high part of the chair facing towards my hip. I'm side on to the chair. So separate your feet 
Now you've got the sensation, the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe, the inner heel. We're just going to do some heel raises. So come up onto the ball of your foot or even the backs of your toes in a slow fashion. And exhale, come back to where you started. And let's do several of these as slowly as we can go. And if you're confident of your balance without holding the chair, by all means, keep your arms by your side or even in prayer position. Notice how easy and how common it is to hold the breath. So to whatever degree you can, nice, even breathing again. Imagine that when your heels are completely lifted, that you're in a straight vertical line, as though you had a string attached to the top of your head, the crown of your head. And just one more of those, and (laughs) coming all the way down. So as I went along, I think my feet got a little bit tired, and I started rolling out. So that's something that we're going to pay attention to today. So um, keep your chair um, just on the edge of your mat, on the um, short end of your mat, and the seat of the chair facing in. And now I've got a clear space on my wall, and I'm (coughs) going to move back to the wall. Foam black block is nearby. And then for the standing pose, Trikonasana, step out reasonably wide. Turn your feet to the right. Turn your left foot in a little bit. Good. And with your hands onto your hips, adjust the pelvis so the tailbone lifts up a little bit. And what I notice when that happens is that creates a nice internal rotation through my left thigh. I don't even have to do it very much. It just happens by lifting the tailbone. And then focusing on the quadriceps, draw the thigh muscles up all the way to the hip crease. And then let's move with the breath and have a few goes at this. Inhale, exhale, extend out to the right, right hand down, left arm up towards the ceiling. We're not holding. Inhale, come up again. Exhale, out in that lateral movement to the right, right hand down, right leg, left arm up towards the ceiling. Let's go again, inhaling up, exhaling out and down, And this time, let's do hold it as a static pose. Roll your shoulders back away from your neck. Bring the back of your head back slightly so it's in line with the whole of your torso. And the chin is down slightly. Feel the tailbone lift again if you've lost that adjustment. And notice your footwork. Some easy breaths there. And the inhalation will bring you up. Inhale all the way up. Turn the feet to the left. Good. Pause for a moment. Anytime you need to rest your arms, just have your hands out to your hips. Then the tailbone adjustment. Tailbone up. Good. Reach out to the left side. Inhale. Exhale. Left hand down. Right arm up. Inhale. Come up again. Not holding just yet. Exhale, out to the side and down. It's a breath-centered movement. You're just going as far as the breath will allow you to do that. Let's hold it this time and adjust the pelvis again, tailbone up. That right thigh is turning in this time, the left thigh turning out. Activate your um, big toe base and uh, um, the quadriceps. We're going to bring ourselves up with the inhalation all the way up, upright. 
Turn your feet to center. Rest your hands onto your hips. Relax your shoulders. Now we're going to dive into um, a balancing pose, and that's why it could be very helpful for you to be back to the wall. The pose is Ardha Chandrasana. And the nice p thing about this pose is that it is strengthening for your legs. And if we move slowly through the stages, then it's accessible and good for our balance. So let's start with right foot turned out again, left foot turned in slightly, and place your foam block in front of your right foot. So how far out? If you bend your right knee over your right ankle and create a reach with your right hand, place the block in front of your little toe and you'll have arrived pretty much at the right distance. Come back upright again and keep your left hand onto your left hip. Extend your right arm out to the side. Take that lunge again and as you reach your right hand down onto the block, slide your left foot in closer to your right foot. When you've done that, you have three points of contact, your right hand and your both feet. But now we're going to um, take the balancing pose. So as you lean towards the block, raise your left leg off the floor and straighten your right leg. You might need a few passes at this. <laughs> And when you've brought your left leg up, no higher than your hip, you've arrived at um, maybe broad brush strokes of the pose. And then you're looking down. And if you feel ready to and your balance is reasonably good, you can bring that left arm up. I'm resting my foot against the wall, but you might have your buttock or your shoulder against the wall for balance and lowering um, back to left hand, left hip. Look for the floor with your left foot and then straighten the right leg, come all the way up. And let's take side two. Starting out um, like you did in Trikonasana with your both feet turned to the left and then take the block. You got an idea of where to place it from the first side, out from your left foot. Right hand, right hip. Take the lunge, left leg. Look out towards the block where you're going to slide your right foot in first. Three points of contact. Support yourself onto the block and then raise that right leg. <laughs> and look for your balance. And also notice if you're holding the pose, <laughs> having trouble talking and doing it at the same time, if you're holding the pose by holding your breath and come back to nice steady breathing. If you feel steady in your balance, then raise up your right arm. And if not, <laughs> keep your right hand on your right hip. And then to release from the pose, look for the floor with your right foot, take it back a little bit, and inhale and come up, arms outstretched, turn your feet to center, and step all the way back in. All right, we're going to have one more round of that pose, half moon pose. So let's go back to the original side, both feet turned out to the right. And you've got a general idea of the pathway to the pose now. So keeping the left hand onto the left uh, hip, extend your right arm out to the right side, take your lunge, reach out and down for the block. And at the same time now, taking that left foot in and raising the left leg. And now let's see if we could work into the thigh muscle and draw up the right thigh above the knee all the way to the hip and see if you're ready to balance with the left arm up. 
that if you are leaning into the wall, see if you can use the lower buttock, the glute right leg, and then looking down, coming down, and to ground. Take the left foot back a little bit. Inhale, come up, and change sides to the left. And going step by step like that will help you keep your balance as you go along. Lunging left leg, right foot slides in. Look for the block. And raise the right leg. Kind of aiming for the trunk to be parallel to the floor. And the right arm coming up. Switch on the left thigh muscle, right thigh muscle, and left buttock. And looking down to release and coming all the way to ground. Take that right foot back. Inhale, come up. And well done. And step into center. Okay, well, we've gotten some of the hard work out of the way. You know, move the block off to the side. And then face towards your chair, towards the seat of your chair. We'll do a little bit with warrior two. Uh, oh, starting with warrior one, Parsvatanasana. Facing your chair, step right foot forward, left foot back. Bring your hands into prayer position, center chest. Lift your elbows a little bit. And at the same time as you bend your right leg, we're gonna bring the arms up overhead for warrior two. Right leg bends, inhale, sweep the arms up, look up. Exhale, back to prayer position, straight right leg. We'll do a few like that, just warming up the knees. Inhale, reach for the ceiling, leg bent. Exhale, straight leg, back to prayer. Just feel the breath in its flow, keeping it smooth, not rough. All right, and as we've been doing, let's take a static position in warrior one. <coughs> and when your arms are parallel overhead or hands joined overhead, then reach back into your left leg and feel now the back of the thigh, the hamstrings, and the left buttock engage. Draw the right knee back towards the right hip, and you'll feel the front thigh muscle or at least that's what I experience. And then let's join hands in front of the chest, straight right leg. And with a smooth movement as you can, step forward, left foot forward, right leg back. When we come to be in asymmetrical positions as you are, for me, I notice there is that tendency to roll to the little toe side of the foot. So we want to draw up the inner thigh muscles all the way into the pelvis. Keep the base of the big toe down. <coughs> and then let's work with the flow. <coughs> bring the hands in front of the chest. Bend the front leg, lunge. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, back to prayer. Straight front leg. Just feel the lovely flow of the breath takes you into the pose and out of the pose all right and then let's take pause when we bend the leg in warrior one pose virabhadrasana one and emphasize those points so the base of the um, left foot big toe Feel into the back leg, switch on your hamstrings, the buttock muscle, right leg, and then draw the left knee back into the hip. Beautiful. 
and then straight left leg, bring the hands into prayer. And let's step forward, both feet together. Take a couple of breaths there. Consolidate, relax your shoulders, soften your facial features. And let's move on and make this into a little vinyasa. Left foot back, right foot forward. So we're going to go from warrior one to Parsvatanasana. <coughs> and I'll talk you through it. Hands in prayer position. Inhale, bring your arms up. Front leg bends. Exhale, straighten that leg. Reach your hands onto the seat of the chair. Pause there just momentarily. Bend your front leg. Bring the arms aga up again, warrior one. Exhale, straight leg to prayer. Keep going. Bend that leg, warrior one. Diving forward, straight front leg into Parsvatanasana. Go again, bend that leg, reach. And exhale, back to prayer position, straight front leg. One more round, inhale. Exhale. Straightening that front leg. Let's stay for a couple of breaths here and sort of tidy up the pose. Press on the inside of your right foot, big toe. <coughs> Feel the little toe of the back foot and turn the left hip forward and draw the right hip back. And then bend your front leg to come out of the pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, release to prayer. Step forward, second side. And in that slow flow of the breath, first warrior one pose, inhale. And then secondly, taking the hands down, support, and head down, Parsvatanasana. Bend the leg, inhale, go up. And exhale, straight front leg back to prayer. Beautiful round movements. The elbows are relaxed. And when you dive forward, there's still a soft bend at the front leg. The next time that we reach forward for Parsvatanasana, Let's hold that pose. So the hands supporting, but very lightly. Then big toe, left foot. Little toe, right foot. Both heels pressing. Open up your chest forward. Bring the front of the right hip forward. Bend your front leg. Let's reach up one more time. Warrior one. Exhale. Prayer position, straight front leg, and push off and step forward. All right, we're going well with the standing poses, and they're a reminder. I'm going to leave my chair there, actually. I just thought of a good way to do this. Um, come back to um, stepping your feet out a little wider than you've done in the previous poses for warrior two pose, and then turn your both feet to the right. Bring your hands into prayer position. Inhale. Exhale. Take the lunge with the right leg, arms out to the side, look to the right. Inhale. Keep moving and bring the hands back to where you started, straight legs. And reaching out and coming into your lunge. Back to center. Just nice gliding movement for your right knee. Arms out to the side, look right. Then back to center. Good. And one more time. And holding and giving its due to the, uh, the warrior two pose, Virabhadrasana two. Let's hold that as a static position. 
Static is probably not a good word because never holding um, completely. There's always the breath that's moving within, even when you're not moving the rest of your body. So feel your diaphragm move with your breath. And then come all the way up straight, right leg. Bring your palms to center. Turn your feet the other way. All right, and then let's go with movement on this side. <coughs> Extend the arms out sideways as you take your lunge. Feel the weight on the still on the big toe base. And then fold the hands back to center. Straighten the, the leg. Moving to the lunge, look over your left shoulder. Head centers when you come all the way up and hands joined in front of your chest. And again, And then let's this time, let's hold it. Feel like you're drawing the left thigh bone back into its hip. And then the tailbone is lifting again. And that will turn the right thigh in slightly. Keep the arch of that right foot, though. All right, good work. And then looking s front and center, straight left leg. Bring the hands to center. Turn your feet in and rest your hands onto your hips. Let's take a couple of shoulder rolls in the other direction, too. And it seems to make sense here in this sequence to do Parsva Konasana. So turn your feet to the right. So side flank position, it's called sometimes. And then <coughs> Let's take the lunge, arms out to the side. And let's move like this. You're going to bend your right elbow and place it onto your right knee as you take your left arm overhead. So it's kind of like a cartwheeling movement without moving your feet. And then come back up, but keep the lunge. And then over to the right side. Right elbow onto your thigh, and inhale up. Exhale out and down. Your right palm is upwards when you've done, done that. Inhale, come up. One more time, and then this time, let's stay there. Have a look at your right foot, perhaps. Bring pressure to bear at the base of the big toe, the front of the heel, and lift the tailbone. And then this time, sharpen the left elbow, and you'll be able to extend that arm a little bit more. Bring the back of your head back. Chin down slightly. Come all the way up. One movement, straight leg, arms out to the side. Rest your hands onto your hips. Turn your feet the other way. Good. And then remembering that patterning. So on the um, exhalation, we're going to extend the arms and bend the left elbow. Take your arm overhead. Inhale yourself up. Exhale over to the left side. Inhale up. Exhale and stay and do one of those tidy ups. Lift your tailbone. Keep the left knee back slightly, but your weight still on the base of the left foot, big toe. And then that long reach of your right arm in the lateral direction. Imagine it stretching away from your left heel. And then all the way up. Feet front and center. Step in. And we've done good work there. And maybe even shake a leg. So if you have been able to work those thigh muscles, it's also important to be able to release them. But we're going to work them a little bit more. So the release we'll do slightly later. Take up your block again. And as before, place it between your feet. 
and bring the inner edges of your feet against the block. I've got my heels a little bit apart and I can press the inside of my big toes against the block and it seems to be able to wake up all of my inner legs, especially my inner thighs. And in that position, we're going to take the chair pose, Utkatasana. Let's bring the arms forward and up at the same time as we bend the knees. Inhale the arms up. And exhale back down by the side. Sitting back into your imaginary chair, arms up. And exhale down. And pitching your chest forward or your trunk forward slightly, arms parallel with your ears. And exhale down. And now we're ready to hold it. And bending the legs and staying there. The weight's on the inside of your um, feet, the base, big, uh, big toe base. And reach with your arms. The more that I do that and then sit the buttocks back, the tailbone lifts a little bit again, the more that le I feel like I have less weight of my torso onto my legs and reaching out. Maybe it's just my imagination. Okay, good work. And then coming up. And give your thigh muscles a little pat. Good job. But we're not quite ready yet still to rest them. I want you to bring a chair in again. I'll bring my chair in. Just as in, in case you need it. And we'll practice a one-legged standing again. And let me start on my... Right leg, uh, right leg raise. So my left leg is my balancing leg. Find your footing on your left foot and then raise your right knee. Replace your right foot onto the floor. And this time when you raise your right leg, see if you can avoid a lean out to the left side. So keep the hips nice and compact and into center. Find your footing on your left foot. Raise your right knee slowly. And when you've done that, there might be a little bit of space for you to raise your right knee a little more. So the right thigh closer to your chest. And then, and using your front thigh muscles, extend your right leg out. Fold that leg back in, it's still lifted, and then back to the floor. If you weren't so aware of where your front thigh muscle is, I think that exercise shows exactly where it is. Balance on your right foot. Without that lean out to the right side, the hips are firm. And you're bringing that knee high as you can towards your chest, maybe a little higher. And balancing there, shoulders are relaxed, and extend out your leg. Good. And folding the leg back in, still lifted, and then back to ground. Let's have one more go. And getting close to resting your thigh muscles, not quite there yet. And we've lifted that knee nice and high towards your um, chest. Extend it. It's not surprising if you feel some cramping of the muscles, that those ones that are a little bit underused. And then replacing your foot. And last side, find your footing first. Strong foot and ankle, right foot. Left knee comes up. A high lift, relax your shoulders. And then you might find that you have been able to balance without the use of the chair. That would be a next stage. And then folding that leg in and down. And then just so that you know that you can release these muscles, just take a little walk around your mat. 
not a great distance, and coming back. For the time being, we're finished with the chair, so I'm going to put it right off to the side. And once you're um, centered on your mat again, we'll just do some little lunges. And it's a just step out to either side. So let's go right first and step right leg out into a lunge. And then back two feet together. And left foot. And back to center. And keeping your balance and taking a small lunge to each side. And then take pause, consolidate, soften your shoulders again. I think um, what I do is I keep recruiting my shoulders if I feel a bit wobbly. So next time that you do the lunge out to the side, step lightly. We don't want these steps to be elephant steps. They're very light. So to the right, and center, and to the left, and center. <coughs> if you're quite steady in your balance, you might take a wider lunge, but you'll find your own level. When you're s stepping lightly, it's almost a silent step. Or not. We might be working up to those silent steps. All right. And then stop in the center and take pause. And th your breathing become nice and smooth again. All right, the last in this part of the series where we're doing standing movements. Step out wide. I think in ballet, your foot position is second position. So you're turning out something like 45 degrees, your feet turning out. If we take the lunge in this position, just dropping our hips, the knee tends to drop into center. So use your inner thigh muscles and stretch them towards the inside of your knees so your knees come back a little bit. And if we straighten the left leg, moving to the right side, and then keep our hips low and move to the left side, I think you'll feel the work in your feet and your legs, and even through your hips. So we're doing this kind of slide across from straight leg on one side to bent leg on the other side. And feel the strength of your thigh muscles. Good. And then hold a center position Lift your toes and elongate them, bring them back down onto the mat. Find the base of the big toe again. And then we'll finish here. Hands in front of the chest, shoulders relaxed. If you can, open through the inner thighs towards the inner knees. And then slowly pushing up and releasing your hands. Heel toe, heel toe back to center or just step in back to center. Good. So if we've worked um, in these lunges, which are strengthening movements, and we've contracted these front thigh muscles, let's stretch them out. So if you turn um, <coughs> and possibly need the support of the wall for balance, we can bend the right leg again, hold the front of your shin or the front of your ankle, and we'll give the front thigh a good stretch from hip to knee. So holding your right foot behind you. 
And the more you can draw the right knee back towards its mate, in, in a line with the left knee, the more stretch you'll get. Good, let it go and swap. And <coughs> you might be able to free balance in this. I'm going to keep the safety of the wall and grabbing the left foot behind you, left hand, left foot. And then in the beginning, the knee may be in front of the line of the body and drawing it back slowly to get the maximum thigh stretch. And let it go. Turn once more, side on to the wall. I'm going to just step out a little bit from the wall. And then <coughs> these um, hip muscles might be a little bit tight too from what we've done. So balance on your left foot again. Bring your right foot onto your left thigh. Some people c call this a figure four position. It's really a stretch for the external rotators of the hips. And we've got right foot, left thigh. Left leg is well bent. All right, and then let's go one more side to go. Balance on your right foot. Bend your right knee a little bit. Bring the left foot onto your right thigh. Be very careful of your knees so we don't want to overly compress them. And sometimes you need to skip one side if that's necessary. You could be in a balancing version of this pose if your balance is good at the moment. And then release that leg. And have a seat. Have a seat on your mat. I'm still going to keep um, the block nearby. We started um, this session with the legs straight out and dandasana like this, your hands behind you. And leaning back into your hands so that you can straighten your spine and open your chest, lift your chest. Bend your legs and have your feet on the floor close to your buttocks. And then reach your foam block and place it underneath your right thigh. Extend your right leg out. So we've got this configuration, left leg bent, left foot on the floor, and right leg is extended and supported by the block underneath the thigh. And then merely lift to whatever extent you can, lift your right leg. and release. So the knee bends again and then the heel supported on the floor. Have another go in raising that leg and then resting that leg. Third time and heel comes up. Press your left foot down so you're balanced on either side and release. And then bend that leg and we'll switch the block over to the left leg. What you'll notice <coughs> is that um, the thigh muscles are not necessarily balanced. So one side might be very much stronger than the other. Let's try this side. So right foot is on the floor, right leg bend. And then we're raising the left leg. For whatever reason, I don't know why. It's not my dominant side, but this feels like much stronger side when I raise the left leg. So we're bringing that leg up and off of the block if possible, or minimal resting there. And third time, 
and then releasing and two feet on the floor again. Just adjust your hands back behind you, maybe move them a little further back or close in, and then lift your chest and elongate the spine. Good. Let's do that movement for one more time, and then just keeping the knees in line, let's straighten the right leg out in front of you. There can be a soft bend behind your knee so you're not overlocking your knee. And then replace your foot onto the floor and left leg straight. We're holding the lift through the strength of the front of the leg and the back of the leg is extending. And then two feet on the floor and it's going to feel really nice for you and me to rest our backs. So take a lying down position. Not quite finished with the foam block. <coughs> and you're lying on your back. It's uh, supported from your head to your pelvis. Legs bent and your feet relatively close to your buttocks. Take the block between your knees. And let's get the backs of the legs working and hopefully the front of the thighs stretching so the hamstrings in will engage and your buttock muscles for these little bridges. So find a light pressure against the block, a light pressure on the big toe base. Press down. And then the more you press down, the more likely you can lift up now and drawing the hips up. Feel that lift is coming from the backs of your thighs, from your hamstrings, and from the gluteal muscles. And then come down a little bit at a time all the way to ground. This next time that we lift up, just come you know, within your range of movement at the moment. It's a backbending movement, so be kind to your spine. Lift the outer hips more than the pubic bone. And if you've got enough space there now, interlock your hands underneath you. Nuzzle your hands together so your wrists will probably be touching if you can. Press your little fingers down. Lift the top chest up. Finally, big toe base. Heel pressing down. Stretch the front of your thighs for all your worth from your hips to the front of your knees. Contract the backs of your legs from the backs of your knees to your buttocks without clenching your buttocks. And now we're moving to ground and lowering down, if you can, a vertebra at a time until your back is resting without the block and bend your knees into your chest. I'm gonna do a little roll on the back of my waist. That feels like a nice releasing movement too. Once your feet are back on the floor and um, close in or knees touching. Bring your arms out to the side and we'll do the simplest rotation for your back. Let your knees drop over to the right side and then look to the left side. And let's give an extra stretch to the outer hip muscles. So from the outer left hip, knees are to the right, to the outside of the left knee. That feels so lovely. And then let's come back to center. Your feet are still on the floor and then dropping the knees to the right side, uh, left side and giving a lovely lateral stretch to the left hip to the left knee, or sorry, right hip to the right knee. Come all the way up. This time when you go over to the right side, 
My left heel lifts a little bit, but my legs are close together. Extend the left arm overhead. And now with the reach of that arm, my head's against my left arm. Now I'm extending my ribs, my waist, my hip, my knee. Fold your arm in, bring the legs over to the left side. And sort of like a long, languorous stretch of your right arm overhead, your knees to the left side, opening up. And then back to center. Separate your feet a little bit. Rest your hands onto the navel center, onto your belly, and feel your breath there as a softening breath. The diaphragm ribs relaxing into the body and downward. And for this particular practice that we've done, I think it would be really lovely to do legs up the wall or legs onto the chair if you're lacking a wall space. So take your time and for a little more elevation, you might bring in your bolster. If you're using a bolster, leave a little gap between the wall and the bolster of about four finger width. If you have an eye covering, that would be a really good addition. And if it's uh, not so accessible for you to use a bolster, then um, just your torso resting on the ground with your legs up is almost as good. So I've gotten into my Viparita Karani, the Sanskrit word for the pose, with my legs up. And I've moved in as close as I can to the wall so that my legs are fully supported. You might bring your hands onto your thigh muscles and give them a little shake out. So what's working now is the back of the leg, the hamstrings, but the quadriceps are off duty. So they're just kind of hanging on the bones, on the support of the bones. Find a place to rest your arms. There's a goal post position for your arms or like Shavasana by your side or just resting one hand in the other overhead. There is a beautiful way of describing this pose as though it were a cascading waterfall from your feet through your leg bones and into your pelvis where if you can completely relax your abdominal muscles, let the muscles just hang back into the pelvis then that cascading water pools in the basin of the pelvis. And then there might be a, a little further um, overflow and towards the heart and softening in the heart center and towards the base of the throat, that area of the 
notch of the throat and the front of your neck releasing, forming a valley shape into the back of your neck. You come into a restorative pose such as this one is, or into your shavasana. You're creating a sacred space for yourself. In our everyday lives, we don't often have that or have time to create that for ourselves. So feel into that sacred space that you've created, a quiet space. And you'll be here for about five minutes. There's no need to come out of this pose just yet, but what you might do as a preliminary step is br bend your elbows and rest your hands onto your trunk, onto the belly or the ribs or the heart center, and still in the quiet and sacred space that you've created, feel through the sense of touch Sending the message to further relax, restore, refresh the body, the mind. And preparing to lower down, so neither rolling to one side or the other, but bend your legs a little bit and simply push back away from the wall or off your bolster. Actually, the bolster is quite a nice place to rest your feet in um, the yoga pose. Baddha Konasana, knees out to the side or just keep your legs bent. Cross-legged is fine. And 
letting the trunk accommodate to lying flat again, softening. And we're going to roll over to the side, but slowly to come up to a seated position. And once you get uh, to a comfortable seated position, bring the hands in front of the chest. My thumbs touch my breastplate and remind me to lift and open the center chest and elevate the heart. The elbows lift a little bit and help you, help us open the corners of our chest. And incline your head towards your heart. Feel the connection there be between mind and heart. And the connection with each other. The gesture is a sign of respect for yourself and for everyone. And thank you for practicing with me today. We say namaste.